Hello, folks. My name is James Bach. I want to tell, talk to you today about ChatGPT because all around the web and on LinkedIn and everything, people are saying, oh, ChatGPT is going to revolutionize testing. There are people doing presentations about how uh, ChatGPT has saved them so much time testing. Uh, most of that is irresponsible nonsense. I have looked at these demos that people do, and when you look closely at them, it doesn't add up. They're doing toy examples. They're not doing things with realistic complexity, or they're just having ChatGPT write code for them. And it's not too terrible at writing code, but that's not the same thing as software testing. So, I'm looking at it from a professional tester's point of view, and I have to say, ChatGPT sucks at testing. Let me show you why. Now, the the uh, entry point that I've used in this case is Bing. Now, Bing has ChatGPT4 integrated into it, and it gives it the extra capability of being able to search the web. But it's other than that, it's it's the same chat GPT-4. doesn't have plugins, but uh, I like using it partly because it's um, very easily uh, available through uh, Skype and, it's, uh, and it has this capability of, of uh, web searching. So here's what I did. I didn't actually ask it in this case to test the website, what I asked it to do is summarize the functionality of a website. I've also asked it to test the website, and that's uh, uh, that's another story. Uh, but I thought I would give it an easier problem this time. So I'm just asking it to describe the functionality of a particular site called bach.geophysicsassistant.com. So I give it the URL and I tell it to describe the functionality. And it says that it belongs to a company called Bach Geophysics and that there's a tool there called Geophysics Assistant. So I ask for the features of that tool and it lists the features. Then I ask it about one of those features. Just are you sure? So I'm asking about the CSV feature. Does it really have that CSV feature? And look what it says. It says, yeah. And it even quotes the website. Well, that's pretty definitive. That's pretty nice. Now I'm asking it for a little more information. Provide the link to that page. Won't do it. And then I ask, did you get the information from the page? I mean, it, the, surely the answer is yes, right? And it says, I can't give a response right now. What else can I help you with? Then I ask it the cost. It can't give me the cost, but it refers me to the website, but not, not to their website, to a totally different website. Indeed.com. Indeed.com doesn't have any information about this tool. In fact, nobody does. Because this tool does not exist. It doesn't exist. There is no such thing as Bach Geophysics Assistant. It's hallucinated this. And this is something you can do with Bing for any URL you give it. It will claim that it went to the URL, but it really didn't go. Now, this is a problem all large language models have. They all do this thing called hallucination. Sometimes it's worse. Sometimes it's better. You can't necessarily predict when it's going to hallucinate. But it's one reason why I can't trust ChatGPT, and neither should you to do anything with facts, figures, data files, anything like that. I've seen lots of demos that show in one particular case that it created some data and then it put the data in JSON format. 
but you can never count on it doing that correctly. You always have to watch it very carefully. Well, let's ask it for actual test cases, shall we? So I got a real user story from a real project and ask it for test cases. Let's see what it does. So this is a project that's a social media project. And in this particular uh, user story, somebody is uh, tagging uh, photographs with people's names, and then they're getting them untagged and, and correcting the tags and that sort of thing. It's a pretty simple user story. So there it is. Big thinks about it, and then Bing gives me some cases. And if you look at them, they they look kind of plausible. Verify that Eric can see Cassie's name or username and profile picture. Verify that Dora can correct Eric's person tag by clicking on it and choosing the correct uh, Cassie, etc. A lot of times ChatGPT does things that if you look at them quickly, it looks am amazingly good. And it did it so fast. I looked at this, though, and I noticed there were no negative test cases. Why didn't it give me negative test cases? So I specifically asked for some. And then it's happy to give me some negative cases. Here we go. There's a bunch of ne negative cases. But I had to ask for that. Now, imagine that you're not a professional tester and somebody says, oh, ChatGPT can do testing. Would the non-professional tester know to ask for what they weren't given? I don't think they would know. Let's look closely at these answers. Everything begins with verify that. There's no information there, so I'm graying that out. Two of the cases are completely irrelevant for testing. The yellow stuff here represents dubious assumptions, reckless assumptions. ChatGPT is imagining functionality that might be in this system. But we want our test cases to deal with things that are really in the system, not things that, are, that might be. So as a tester, I have to go and check all this stuff. And that's not saving me very much time, is it? The blue stuff, this is stuff that I gave to ChatGPT. It's right in the user story. So that doesn't give me anything. Doesn't save me any time. The green stuff, three lines of green, is where ChatGPT has noticed an implication that's in the user story, but not explicitly stated. But that's actually useful. And it doesn't involve a reckless assumption. But notice how little of that there is here. And then there are all these names. I don't want specific names of people, random people, that come from a user story to be put into a test case. It doesn't make sense. What am I supposed to do when I'm running that, that test case? What this should be turned into is generic names with setup instructions for how to set up the, the prerequisites for setting up that account so that it's ready to be used in the test case. But I didn't get any of that. That's part of developing test cases. We didn't get any of it. ChatGPT should have done this. But it doesn't because it sucks. So this is bad testing. This testing completely ignores any related features, any data. It's very little variety of data. I mean, we could have different kinds of photos that we tag. Big photos, little photos, photos without faces in them. None of that is thought of by ChatGPT. This is very simple, very shallow test ideas. No questions were asked. It should have asked me a bunch of questions. Now, you might say, but James, it's not fair to ask ChatGPT to do this. 
it was a trick question. But it is fair because a good tester, a competent tester, knows when they're in a situation that doesn't call for test cases. If you ask me to create test cases out of that, I would laugh at you. I'm not take, I'm not creating test cases out of our user story when I have no idea, when I have no idea what the product looks like. So what I would do, my counter proposal to you would be, I would ask questions. I know I have to learn about the product and I have a bunch of questions about how it might work. That's what a competent tester does in this situation. You don't just start writing down test cases. Large language models suffer from various syndromes that I've identified in my experiences and research with ChatGPT. I've used local versions of ChatGPT, the open source versions that you run on your own system. I've used versions that have extra things on it, like that uh, where you up, you can upload documents like specifications and then ask it questions about the documents. Those don't work well. I've used the OpenAI uh, API to write programs that use this. I've done a variety of different attempts to get value out of ChatGPT. What I've found is it is incurious. By design, these things do not ask questions. They placate you. They apologize all the time. They'll change their answers if you, if you bully them enough. They hallucinate. They're incongruent. What that means is if you ask ChatGPT for a process of doing something, like what would be a good process for testing, it'll tell you some things, but then it won't follow that process. If you ask ChatGPT, what would a good tester ask about this product? It'll give you some good questions many times. It can be useful that way, but it will never actually ask those questions of you unless you tell it to ask those questions of you. Then it will do a little bit of questioning and then it will stop again. Try it for yourself. You'll see. It has trouble with numbers. If you ever ask it for any kind of mathematics, uh, you're going to get strange results. It's lazy. It's opaque, meaning that I have no idea where its answers come from, and it has no ideas. You can't even ask it, how did you get that answer? It'll, it won't give you a, a useful reply. It's unteachable, unlike a human who you could talk to if there's a problem. You can't talk to this thing. I mean, it'll forget whatever you say to it in a few minutes. And it can't deal with diagrams. Maybe someday it will be able to. There are some ways that they could improve ChatGPT, but fundamentally, the limitations of large language models are such that it doesn't really reason. It doesn't really have the ability to carry out an inquiry. And testing is always a process of inquiry and investigation. The people who are demonstrating the ChatGPT does testing work are merely demonstrating that it can take a simple instruction and hand that same information back to you in the form of a JavaScript program. They're not showing the essence of test design. So beware. All right, thank you for listening. Bye.